So the food and grocery manufacturing industry is at the heart of the fast-moving consumer goods sector, a sector that is constantly at the mercy of consumers' changing demands, whether they're driven by changes in technology, demographics, ethnic changes, values, incomes and a whole range of other factors. But before I go on, I'll just briefly mention about the AFGC. So we're a peak industry body representing food, beverage, grocery manufacturers. We operate between the farm gate and the retail gate. So we have companies that are agribusiness processes of dairy, meat, grain type products, through to very heavily transformed products that are in your supermarket every day. And they range from large multinational companies like your Mars, Unilever, Nestle's, down to your small Australian brands like your Beechworth, Honey, Beerenberg. About a third of Australia's agricultural production goes into the domestic market for value adding. So it's increasingly important that the agricultural sector understands consumer drivers and how they're shaping food and grocery manufacturing industry that you are selling into. And just briefly, some stats on the food and grocery sector. So we're the largest manufacturing sector in Australia. We have a turnover of $127.5 billion and employ 320,000 people. About 40% are in regional and rural areas. And we have a total two-way trade of nearly $68 billion, of which exports are nearly $32.5 billion, and growing, particularly for small businesses. But as mentioned, food and grocery manufacturing is constantly responding to the ever-changing consumer preferences in an era where consumers are empowered more than ever through technology. This chart shows the traditional factors that have influenced consumers' buying decisions, on the left in grey around price, taste and convenience. And on the right we've got the evolving drivers that influence purchasing decisions, so trends around health and wellness, safety, social, uh, social impact and experiences. And a driver that really surrounds all of those is around transparency and this increased right to know that consumers have for everything to do with their product from the source of the ingredients, the production methods, uh, right through to uh, everything around that product. So these changing consumer demands affect every part of the fast moving consumer goods industry, from the types of products and packaging that they use, how they source inputs and produce products, the relationships and practices along the supply chain, consumer marketing and sales models. According to Deloitte, approximately half of consumers surveyed say that their purchasing decisions are influenced by these evolving drivers on the right. We do, however, need to be conscious around consumer surveys. I know from experience that sometimes consumers' shopping intentions aren't necessarily reflected in um, the actual behaviour. Uh, and that was something that we found about five years ago when we did a, a survey around sustainability where people had a very high intention to buy sustainable products, but when they actually walked out the door and we measured what was in the basket, it was actually quite low. Um, so there can be a big difference there. That being said, there is still this, this trend and there are certainly pockets um, within some groups of society that are very influenced by these factors. So just going through some of those, health and wellness. So there's a very broad range of areas that this covers off. So it goes from desires for clean label or free from products that don't contain dairy or wheat or gluten, artificial ingredients, sugar, a whole range of things through to the production methods, um, so focuses around organic production methods, through to desires for less, uh, less processed or more natural ingredients and products. In the safety category, I think uh, within Australia we generally take food safety for granted, although um, recent incidents um, still make us aware that that is something that, that we shouldn't take for granted, absolutely. Um, but safety uh, attributes really cover off other areas as well around allergens is particularly an area of um, high and increasing concern for consumers, uh, as well as desire for products to be toxin-free, carcinogen-free, etc. Social impact covers a broad range of not only environmental but social sustainability issues, animal welfare, but also other issues like local sourcing has become an increasing driver. While the number of consumers shopping according to the social impact driver is small, it can actually be a very vocal group. So we see it more as a bit of a right to play rather than a right to win. Um, increasingly consumers expect that businesses are doing the right thing on the sustainability front. And I think to a point that um, Hayley had raised, it's not necessarily something that will drive an increased return for your business in the short term, um, but absolutely as part of your long-term value proposition is something consumers increasingly expect. 
In the experience area, um, this includes a whole range of things like personalization of products. You've seen companies like Coca-Cola and Nutella directly marketing to consumers with names of um, individuals listed on the, on the product. But it also goes down to customizing products for particular segments of society, be they um, particular ethnic groups, particular age groups, etc. Um, experience also captures the consumer desire for experiences. So in-store, you're seeing overseas, particularly the real growth of ex in-store experiences in the retail shopping centres. Um, new purchasing channels. All of these are, are aimed at deepening the consumer connection to increase satisfaction, trust and loyalty with the brands. And transparency, as I mentioned, includes the increase in consumer right to know campaigns about products, their sourcing, production methods and so on. It also includes um, areas around how com companies can validate the origin, the safety, etc., through traceability systems to be able to convey that information to consumers. Just now going through some of the drivers in a little more detail, the Australian palette is continually evolving with changes over time reflecting demographic changes in society and global trends. Retailers are increasingly looking to meet consumer taste preferences with local ranging based on demographics within local areas. And in addition to ethnic cuisine trends, there are ever-changing consumer trends centred around diet fads, which are very hard to keep up with. So protein and fat are currently in and sugar's out, where previously fat was out, and I'm sure it'll change again in another five years' time. It's hard to keep up. As technology and the pace of society has increased, so too has the desire for increased convenience with meals and meal preparation. A lot fewer meals are being eaten by families together, people are spending less time preparing meals, and they're also much more willing to pay a considerably higher amount for meals that are ready-made. So this growth of eating out is leading food grocery companies to compete by increasing the level of convenience they can provide through meal kits, heat and eat, online, resealable products, and eating on the go all products that meet the consumer need for convenience, but in products that can be sold in retail outlets. Premiumisation, I don't know if it's actually a real word, but it's one that's bantered around a lot now in industry. Um, the increased desire for experience reflects the fact that while consumers generally shop on price, particularly in Australia, there are those that value other attributes. Some consumers value convenience and premiumisation and are prepared to pay significant multiples for those benefits. So you take something like ordinary table salt, which has a rather low value, put it into a jar and add a grinder on top of it, and you can get a 15 times price multiple. The opportunity for food and grocery manufacturers is to find creative ways like this to add value to products in a way that meets the consumer's desire for new experiences, premium and convenience. The internet and social media has empowered consumers and amplified the voice of groups that have particular concerns. This has led to consumer demand for information about ingredients, allergens, source, production methods, whether or not they're ethically produced. And this often um, plays out through um, calls for changes to labelling. So recently we've seen changes to introduce health star ratings and country of origin labelling. One of the challenges on the ethical sourcing side for industry is to map their supply chains to understand where risk exists, such as where there are unsustainable um, practices within supply chains, and to put in place measures to mitigate those risks, such as through certification schemes, contracts and um, remedies. Simple as this sounds, it's an incredibly complex process, particularly in situations where supply chains are very deep and the many layers hide a relationship, um, so the brand owner may have five, t five tiers deep to their original supplier of a product and might not have the direct visibility around the practices um, that are used. The other challenge for industry is in finding ways to communicate the information and stories to consumers. So space on the label is increasingly crowded and hence companies are looking for other options such as extended labelling through digital technologies. And just lastly, digital disruption. How will technology shape the future of the food and grocery industry? I'm just going to read this quote from Amazon. You can see a scenario where at four o'clock in the afternoon, a light bulb arrives at my door and I say, why is this here? And 30 minutes later, the light bulb goes out because Amazon knows that your light bulb is about to run out. As this quote shows, there'll be much more use of AI and data analytics te technology to understand and satisfy consumer needs and preferences, possibly before the consumers even realise it. 
Increased use of AI and other digital technologies could lead to online shopping unlike what we experience now. Retailers and food and grocery suppliers could meet consumer desires for experiences, convenience, etc., through augmented reality shopping in which consumers walk down a virtual aisle, adding products to their virtual shopping basket. Or even still, to have items that are selected automatically for them based on data about how their preferences not only uh, exist for taste, price and convenience, but also uh, based on data and their preferences for some of those other drivers around social impact, health, wellness, safety, etc. Businesses are increasingly tracking consumer purchasing behaviour, insights and trends to determine what consumers want, when they want it, where they want it, how they want to purchase it and what they're willing to pay. Companies will need to respond by really reassessing their unique value proposition, what gives them an advantage, how to gain their competitive edge with their new brands, products, production processes, channels, packaging and information that satisfies consumer desires. This isn't anything that's necessarily new. That's the basis of competition, of markets, of marketing. But the speed of decision making is so much faster and the desire for personalisation, experiences and information means that there's an increased need for richer consumer insights, better metrics and better analytics. And for food and grocery businesses, new technologies will allow them to tailor offerings and ranges to consumers, improve the accuracy and reduce the lead time for forecasting, product development, inventory and replenishment, provide more direct offerings to consumers, leveraging the power and influence of social media and networks, more efficient operations and so much more. In this environment of technological, economic and societal change, one thing is constant. Consumer needs and desires will continue to change and the food and grocery manufacturing industry will need to continuously evolve as it has done for centuries. After all, it's called the fast-moving consumer goods industry for a reason. Thank you.